Welcome back to the Poker Heaven Hungarian Cup. We're here in Budapest for this year's main event, where 79 players are all vying for a podium finish. But before we get back to the tables, here's a quick reminder of the ranking of hands in poker. Starting at the bottom, you have your high card. Next up, we have a pair, two cards of equal rank. This is followed by two pair. Then three of a kind, which is three cards of the same number, also known as trips. A straight is five cards in the same order with different suits. A flush is five non-sequential cards of the same suit. A full house is a combination of three of a kind and a pair. Four of a kind is exactly what it says on the tin. A straight flush is five cards of the same suit in a numerical order. And finally, a royal flush, the daddy of them all. A straight flush ending in ace high. So we're down to the final ten now in heat one. We need to lose two more players and the remaining eight will go straight through to the semis. Looks as though Gurgly Parabont, considering a bet, 16,000 he makes it. Will he get any customers? Obviously nerves exposed now as we get nearer and nearer to that semi-final. But Laszlo Breeder, he decides to call. Everybody else happy to get out of the way. And we'll have two players to see the flop. A yeah, decent sized pot this as well. Six, two, five, not exactly a razor's flop. There's the bet though. All in, 13,000. Well, with so much in, it's an automatic call. Breeder makes it. He'll survive whatever happens. And he turns over. Ace Jack. And finds himself up against red nines. And he, oh, he needed to avoid a jack. And there it was. The ace makes two pair, but it didn't matter. And we have another casualty. Gurgly Parabont is back to Budapest. And Laszlo stacking them with pride. As expected, players became more reserved, no one wanting to risk their chance at reaching the semi-finals. As time went by, Peter Dragar was to be reminded of the basics of poker, as he discovered that raising all-in with ace-queen was a much more powerful and successful move than calling an all-in with ace-queen. One person who took advantage of the tight table was Yanis Apleny, whose continual all-ins, although effective and rewarding, began to upset his fellow opponents. But it was only a matter of time before two players found themselves all in. Gabor Lennart needs to hit a 10 to win. The river is a queen. And Peter Marjai takes down the pot. And Gabor has lost a lot of chips there. We rejoin the action as Gabor Lennart deliberates on his untimely call, whilst Peter Marjai looks down on his now prosperous chip stack. So we need to lose one more player to get down to our final eight. And Gabor is going to push all his chips in 60,000. Just wonder if he's on tilt, maybe. Lost that previous hand. And Stella has only got around about, what, 20, 25,000 there. Giving it some thought. What are those shiny nails going to do? They're going to put the chips on the table. We're going to have a showdown. We may lose a player. Unless anyone else fancies it for the 60 here. Well, why would you call? You know that there's a good chance of losing a player. Well, Carosi. Norvath is calling. Well, he must have, what, aces or kings to be making that move. So, three-way showdown now. And is Carosi going to turn over? Queens. You won't want to see a big hand. Or even an ace anywhere. Four, five. Four, five. Well, from Gabor. And Stella, well, she felt it was now or never with the tens. Well, there's a four. That helps a bit, but that... <laughs> Makes trips. There is a flush draw though now for Stella. She'll need to hit a spade. That's no good. That gives a full house to the Queens. And trip four is no good. No spade. So two players knocked out. You say goodbye to Gabor and Stella. And it will be Karozi Norveth who is pulling in. A massive bundle. So an explosive finish to day one here, and in the end it's only the seven players who will head to the semi-finals on day three.
everybody was was playing so so tight because everybody everybody was waiting for the good hands and yeah actually I had to push as well I had luck with a pair of kings and I I, I hit the set but uh, yes you mentioned as well people were folding ace king as well so it was really really tight. <laughs> With that early double up against Gabor Lennart, Peter Marget is sitting comfortably with just over 240,000 in chips, whilst Laszlo Breeder has a lot of ground to cover if he wishes to make that final table. Well, it's now time to take a break from the tables as we go and find out a little bit about the history and culture of this Hungarian capital as we go out and about in Budapest. So here we are in the beautiful Hungarian capital. One of the most striking features of Budapest is the giant Danube River. The river is vaulted by nine bridges, one of the most recognisable being the Chain Bridge, which has become a symbol of Hungarian liberty. Now, the other side of the river is Pest, which is the more industrial part of the city. But if you cross one of the nine bridges, you come over here to Buda, which is where we are now, and it's the home of the castle district. The castle began its life in the 12th century, when King Bailey IV of Hungary built his royal home. We've now come to the Parliament Building, which is one of the largest and most well-known buildings here in Budapest. It was built between 1885 and 1902, and the architecture of this building has been heavily influenced by the Parliament House in London. At 900 feet, it is so long that it has two separate tram stops of its own. Just down the road from the Parliament building stands the largest church in Budapest, whose landmark dome can be seen from all over the city. The construction of the church took 60 years to complete, and visitors can enjoy a trip in an elevator up to the circular lookout at the top, where you can enjoy stunning views of the city. Situated by City Park, a more modern but no less important addition to the Hungarian capital is Hero Square. Lying at the end of Andrzej Avenue, the square holds the Millennium Memorial. This tall monument is surrounded by statues of the leaders of the seven tribes that founded Hungary in the 9th century. Like Hero Square, Budapest is a city steeped in history and beauty, and well worth a visit. So, seven excited players are already through to the semi-finals from day one, but it's now the start of day two, and another 40 poker enthusiasts are ready and waiting for their chance to be crowned this year's champion. The Poker Heaven Hungarian Cup continues. Day two now, and Robert Mackay from seat five raises it up to 500. He's got a couple of callers grub too. Now we're five-handed going to this flop. Well, they check round to the razor, and Robert Mackay puts in 1,200 chips. That should sort the wheat from the chaff, and we are seeing cards being folded. Just one more player to get through. It's Laszlo Pusse, who wants to play. Very impressive visor he's wearing. Looks like something from the future. Ace on the turn. Pusse very quick to check it, but not so Robert. He's come out betting again. Pusse calls. We will see a river card. It's another nine and another diamond. A very quick check again. Well, it's gone check, check at the end. So showdown. Ace eight for Robert. Pair of aces for Robert. He'll pull it in. Tibor Karip in seat four, reaches for a raise, puts in a thousand, gets a call from Attila Vazarchi. The button and the blinds decide to abandon ship, so two gentlemen will see three cards. Here we go to the flop then, which comes King, Jack, eight. There's a couple of spades on board there too. Who's going to be the aggressor? Well, T yeah, Tibor coming out batting here. He bet pre-flop. Now, what is Attila going to do? Two and a half thousand to the bet, and he's just doubled it. Well, you expect aggression from someone <laughs> called Attila, but he has been attacked right back in a very firm fashion by Tibor Carrot. Suddenly, those cards don't look so pretty, but he makes the call. Oh, when Tibor shows he's got pocket ace, he's got a set. Happy about it, but oh, that opens the door a little bit for Attila. A king or a jack would give him a better full house. It isn't to be. Oh, the dealer's folded the wrong hand there. Tibor, very quick to tell her, I have got eights full of kings. He was very polite there as well, wasn't he? But he was pretty quick. 
And uh, unfortunately for Attila, who had uh, Trip Kings, not enough. He's gone. Nice to see a happy winner. Tibor folds this time. No. Blinds at this point 100 200. Robert in the white there has made it 400 to go. No shortage of action, even with these relatively small blind levels. We saw that in heat one as well. They've come to play, Grub. Well, we have three players now. There's our flop 10 Jack 7. Robert bets 600. Gets a call. And in the big blind, Zoltan, he also calls. Turn card is a four of diamonds. Robert's been very aggressive pretty much all day. Looks like he's betting again. 2100 this time. Gets rid of the player in seat nine. But Zoltan has come back over the top, all in. It's about 7,000 chips. And Robert says, all right, I call. What have you got? And Zoltan, he's turned over a straight. He flopped the straight. Gets an acknowledgement from Robert, who has Queen Jack and is drawing dead as a dodo. So the straight stands up for Zoltan. And that is really going to hurt for Robert Mackay. Blinds now up to three and six, and it is Bakai Norbert who raises to 1,600. He gets a call there from Dagdalen Burhan. Also a call from uh, Daniel Victor as well. So a lot of money in the middle. A raise and two callers. We should see some competition here. The flop comes seven, nine, ten. Well, Daglan bets 5,000 there. All in, says Daniel. Gets rid of the ace-queen. But a very, very quick call from Dagdalen. The card will go over. Top pair there for Daniel Vicor. And Daglan showing pocket eight. Well, he's got an up-and-down straight draw. And he hits it straight away. Would you believe it? So this one pretty much over. Seven is no good. That's two pairs for Daniel, but it's also a good luck and goodbye. And he'll feel maybe a little bit aggrieved as well. And when it's your day, it's your day. Daniel is all smiles. It was very unfortunately, unfortunately, but uh, I like the tournament. It is a good idea that uh, that uh, many people uh, can show uh, his knowledge now for not too high uh, entrance fee. Well, Laszlo Wenzel hasn't played many hands, and he's all in here. It's yes. usually a sign grub that he's got some kind of strength. Well, he's been called by Georgi Vikor, who's now virtually dead. And now he is dead. I just wonder whether he's on tilt. He, he got a bad beat not too long ago, and I think it still might be affecting him. Yeah, calling with King 5 is a sign that it is time to leave. Go home, have a cold chat, and possibly cry. Well, we started day two with 40 players, and we're now down to 24. So join us after the break for some more action from the Poker Heaven Hungarian Cup here at the Royal Poker Club.